everybody. Good morning, Mayor. In case you didn't get the visual, orange is the new black in Lincoln. <laughs> and by that we mean orange barricades are dotting the streets across the city, uh, signaling our administration's commitment to safe and smooth streets as a funding priority in the city. We're spending more annually now on our streets than ever before. That's why in the last five years, we've improved over 60 miles of arterial streets and 400 blocks of residential streets, civic investments that help keep our community safe and our economy strong. But we intend to do even more. That's why I'm here to announce that the city this year is planning to improve 24 miles of streets in 2015, one of the largest street construction investments in the history of the city. In fact, it is more than double the number of miles completed in 2014 and 30% higher than our next best year during my time in office. The summer of progress is underway and at City Hall, we hope that the people will have accolades for the barricades. Over the next few months, the city will be repairing the streets you drive on every day. South 56th, south of Old Shaney, almost to Pine Lake, is being improved and widened to improve traffic flow. Old Shaney is being improved and widened to improve traffic flow. The potholes on Northwest 48th Street, from West Vine to West Adams, will soon be a problem of the past. Old Shaney from 70th to 82nd Streets is nearly complete. The key intersection of 27th and O Street has already been completed on time and on budget. Our summer of progress is possible because of our citizens' investment of money in roads. The street increased street construction revenues by $7 million annually in 2010, part of that year's budget changes that included, most prominently, wheel tax revenue increases. That increase is now having a profound impact on our street construction budget. Last year, we were able to complete North 33rd Street repairs years sooner as a result of the additional funding. This year, in addition to the streets I mentioned earlier, we will make improvements to one of the most important thoroughfares in Lincoln, 70th Street, from Van Doren to North of O. Improvements to Van Doren Street from 33rd to 48th are also moving forward. Reconstruction of the worn out Penny Bridges is well underway. All of these projects can be done now rather than years later as a result of the increased investment by Lincoln taxpayers. We are scheduled to spend $55 million over the next two years in reconstructing, widening, and improving major arterials. We are putting your dollars to work like never before, and we are making progress as never before. The city is always looking for opportunities to make even greater progress. In March, final audits and budget closeouts indicated that the streets portion of the Antelope Valley project had finished $10 million under budget we went to work and formulated a plan to use those dollars on street maintenance, more than doubling our city's two-year investment in street maintenance. <coughs> the new funding will speed progress on several important maintenance projects. North 84th, North and South 27th Street, Normal Boulevard, Superior, and West O Street will have their start dates moved up by as much as five years ahead of the previous schedule. Once we build a street, we must ensure, of course, that it's well-maintained. 
as it is at least eight times more expensive to rebuild a worn out street than simply maintaining in good condition that same street. Investing the Antelope Valley funds in street maintenance is saving us a lot of money down the road. In addition, new state-of-the-art equipment for making repairs faster, more durable, and longer lasting. Investing a portion of the 10 million in innovative new heavy equipment will extend the life of the repairs from days or weeks to as long as five years. In addition to creating longer lasting repairs, the new equipment will increase the productivity of our street maintenance crews, helping us stretch our street dollars even further, allowing us to get more done more quickly. We are working closely with our colleagues on the Lancaster County Board to fund the South Beltway and to fund the 33rd and Cornhusker projects both projects have significant and expensive railroad crossings that could be made safer and more efficient. Using funds from the Railroad Transportation Safety District, which is a joint city county body. Some of the RTSD levy was diverted to aid the county during a budget crisis. We are working closely with the county board at this point to ensure that funding is returned to the RTSD so that we can advance these two street projects that are critical to our future. Progress is being made in all directions at record levels. We are ready to take on our remaining road challenges and do even more. And now it's up to the community to decide how much more and what's next. The update to the community's long range transportation plan is an opportunity and we will make it a big opportunity for a public discussion about what's next for Lincoln's transportation network. We are scheduled to update the plan next year in preparation for that update, a public process will be held this summer. We will discuss what challenges and opportunities lie ahead, re-examine values as they relate to travel and development, and what our transportation should look like uh, in the future. That whole progress will help us build a consensus on how we address our street challenges in to the entire next decade. The Long Range Transportation Plan community engagement will help the public better understand what we are doing well in street construction and what needs more work. It will be an opportunity to discuss the pace at which we are building and repairing major streets. We are improving them more miles of arterial road than ever before if the community wants an even more aggressive arterial road program, we have to continue, we will, we have to continue this accelerated pace, not for one year or five years, but every single year. It will be an opportunity to discuss the changing face of transportation funding. The primary source of funds for streets used to be the federal gas tax. But the federal government has held transportation funding at stagnant levels, and the federal gas tax has not increased in 20 years. As a result, Lincoln has had to rely more on local wheel tax funding to keep up with the need. The discussion will also be an opportunity to talk about how we maintain roads in the future. Lincoln's strong growth over the past two decades has created a wide network of roads that must be maintained. If Lincoln's 2,760 lane miles were one road, it would stretch from Lincoln to the Earth's equator. We must plan for regular repair and maintenance of a lot of roads. 
to protect the city assets and to provide for roads that last longer and are more cost effective. The plan will also be an opportunity to talk about our residential streets. Neighborhood streets need attention. While we have repaired 400 blocks of residential streets over the last five years and are scheduled to prepare another 100 blocks this summer alone, the need is still greater than the pace of repair. These decisions altogether uh, will help uh, shape our future from way back. From the dawn of civilization, roads have been critical to the success of a community, creating economic vitality and a path for future success. Communities that have successfully done, dealt with their roads challenges have thrived. And over the last few years, Lincoln has been meeting tough challenges. This summer's unprecedented 24 miles of planned street improvements is a great example. We have remade our community and created a nationally recognized climate for business success and for the high quality of life. If we can rise to the same level of accomplishment and achievement with our streets, Lincoln will continue to thrive for decades to come. Uh, with that, why don't we open it up to questions on this part of the uh, uh, conference, and then we'll move on to a short announcement that we have with regard to the West Haymarket and uh, street closings and the West Haymarket, uh, but it's probably going to be easier if there are questions on this part to take those questions at this point in time. So. When will the Nancy. discussion on streets begin? Pardon me? When will the discussion begin? I mean, do you have a timeline? Uh, it will begin this summer, late summer, but I don't. we don't have specific dates at this point in time. Are you going to have one of those things where you go online and they ask you questions about the streets and feed you information? All, all yet to be determined. Oh, okay. And also, are bids coming in? Any higher than expected because there's more construction work than there was four or five years ago? Uh, Roger Fiker and Thomas Schaefer are here this morning to deal with those kinds Thanks. of questions. <clears throat> Good morning. Actually, we've seen some of both, uh, but we just did take bids on the concrete repair of 84th Street that will run from just north of Vine Street up to uh, north of Adams, and those bids were very reasonable. They actually were under our estimate. Um, so I think it just depends on, on the contractors out there. They, um, we've had some traffic signal bids that have been a little bit higher than normal that we're looking at, but we're keeping a close eye on that to make sure that we don't waste any of those dollars. And also on the negotiations with the county, you said nice things about them, but are you trying to get them to back off of using a part of that levy this, for the next year, next budget year? Uh, I think what we would like to do is to firm up our understanding with them as to their intentions with regard to uh, what they can commit to in a very definite sort of way with respect to those two projects. Uh, we, we, we need to have a direct one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversation with them and be sure that everybody on in, from both the city and the county are in agreement on how things will proceed. I think the, co the community is owed that commitment from the city and the county so everybody understands what, what will happen. Well, you have, a, you have a lot of questions there. Let me, let me try to sort that out a little bit. With regard to the sales tax, uh, obviously uh, that was an option given to the city, but for us, we, we, are, we are exercising that option in the public safety area and not in the transportation area. They also... 
LBA, LBA year, eighty four dollars a yeah, quarter cent from the, the state. Some of it was supposed to go to city roads too. I thought is that helping much or no? Or? Well, there was a bill. You can talk about the earlier bill, but uh, there was a bill last year that was designed to help the city, uh, and that will put some more money into the city system. Uh, it's designed to go in effect over a three-year period, if I'm remembering correctly. The, whether there will be additional money the first year is, is in question because of the nature of the formula as it relates to the price of gasoline. Uh, so it may or may not help us the first year. We're hoping that it helps us in the following years, but, that, but how much is dependent upon other factors too. Is there, is there another bill you're interested in? Well, I, that one was passed, and then there was also last year, the, this last session, the gas tax increase at the state level, in addition <coughs> to the quarter cent sales tax. It was supposed to help state roads, and I right. thought some of the city, I don't know if it meant very much for the city or not. <coughs> LB84, which is the quarter cent, yeah. quarter percent yeah. of the sales tax, um, the estimates were that it would bring in somewhere between five and seven hundred thousand dollars to the city. And uh, so that does help. Every little bit helps. That, that helps boost some of our numbers and get to more things. Um, and then, as the mayor alluded to in 610, the gas tax, um, the early indications are because uh, the cities receive uh, a lot of our money comes from the wholesale price of gas. And lower gas prices mean good things, but it doesn't help our revenues because that we're tied to a percentage of the wholesale price. So 610 will just make up what we're losing in terms of, of that for a while. Um, gas prices are predicted to go back up and then we should see a, a more money flowing in that will help us as well. You're covering a, a lot of road construction and all this and you said 100 residential blocks this summer alone. I mean, are we going to see a potential of more discussion of we need more money as far as the city goes or, or what's gonna happen as far as our, the tax base is that? Do we need to put in more money to keep up with the pace? The, the, that's the point of the whole discussion we would like to have with the public this summer and fall. Uh, if uh, it, it will be good for people to, uh, first of all, understand what's being done, uh, what the result of the current surge will be, what the ongoing ability to maintain that is. Uh, and then after they understand that, to understand what level of service they want on the roads. Obviously, as you go from the very top quality of roads across the board down to lower and lower qualities of roads, that makes a huge difference in how much money you spend, how much taxpayer money you spend. And that should be a judgment that the, that the public makes. Uh, what, what quality of roads do you want? And if we can get on the same page as to that quality and the amount of money it will take, that's where we want to get to, where there's a common understanding of what needs to be done, uh, how it can be done on an ongoing basis, and how much money that will cost the community. I mean, you're starting it today, right, for this 40th from Van Dorn project. What's going to happen? What's the timeline on that, um, on that project and what you're going to do? Um, Van Dorn has uh, been going on from 33rd to 40th for the first part of this summer, right after school got out. Um, we're working to get the piece in front of the school done first, and we're moving from 40th over to 48th. And so uh, that should be finished up um, yet this fall. And as far as the residential roads are concerned, they said some driveway closures uh, are restricted. So are there limitations as far as I can't get into my house or anything like that? Um, generally, we work with property owners to uh, keep them in their driveways as long as possible. But uh, the day that we have to take the uh, concrete out on their driveway to match it to the new road, they'll be out of that. Generally, we tell folks a week. We try to make it shorter than that. Um, we also try not to put long stretches out so they can park on side streets. Sometimes people work out with their neighbor and park across the street in that driveway. 
um, to make things work. Um, Lincoln's really nice in that regard that neighbors help neighbors out during that time. But it's generally about seven days. You good on that topic? All right, something a little more colorful. We wanted to talk about a much smaller and narrower situation in the West Haymarket. As you know, uh, there's a big concert coming to town uh, next week, and we're all uh, very glad to welcome the country singer Kenny Chesney uh, to Pinnacle Bank Arena for uh, a week from today, I think, Thursday. Is that right? July 16th. Two outdoor events are, are being planned in connection with that concert also. A, a No Shoes Nation pre-party is set for 2 to 8 p.m. in the Arena's North Festival lot, and the Rail Yard is hosting a party from 4 to 8 p.m., as I understand it. And to accommodate the increased activity, we'll, we will be closing Canopy Street from Q to R, and R will be closed to through traffic in the arena area. And Dave Landis is going to help me out here with additional details, I hope, David. You ready to go? I'm ready with my No Shoes Nation tool. Oh, my <laughs> God. I have a hat, and you have That's no right. <laughs> Who is our customer? We, we have to talk about that. We ourselves entirely. <laughs> Take a look at this graphic, you'll have a feel for this. It's a matter of city development and you've got 12 or 13,000 people coming to a concert in an arena and many of them from out state or out of the city. You want them to come early and you want them to stay late. You want them to be here enjoying themselves and spending money. And to do that you throw a party before and you make it as pleasant as you can be to have them come back. So to help do that there are two parties, as the mayor said, one north over here that's the No Shoes Nation, one here in the rail yard. That changes uh, patterns of uh, travel. We really do not want to encourage travel through the hay market itself. Those businesses are there. They need their space. They need uh, access to their folks. We really want people to use Arena Drive. All that uh, laneage uh, with little signage or blockage, this moves quickly and it moves a lot of traffic. So to do that, this area is blocked, the area in blue, so you won't be able to turn up Canopy Drive and you won't be able to use this area. That will allow the rail yard to bleed out and have a party here. Same thing will happen to the north of the arena. These are drop-off areas if people want to be let off so that they can then walk to the arena or to some activity. This is the ADA drop-off and it'll serve two purposes. ADA users will be able to come in, unload here, turn around and go back out. And then for the people in red one, the garage, they'll be able to come in and go into the garage. When the occasion is over, the red one will be directed to the north. The north half of the second garage, which is green two, will be headed north. The other half of that will be headed south and the blue three will be headed south. What that means is fast in, fast out. It also means that you're using the best road to get there. And also we intend, if at all possible, to make sure that there's activity and opportunity for the Haymarket traditional restaurants and activities to have access to their customers as well. So um, I think that's what we have in plan for the occasion. There are street closings. They allow us to pour out into the street and enjoy ourselves and to welcome what we will anticipate are many, many guests to our cities occasioned by Kenny and is no shoes nation. Questions? Okay. No shoes, no questions. I'm gonna to have to remember that relationship. <laughs> Thank you all very much for coming today. <laughs>